Give peace, O Lord, to those who wait for you, that your prophets be found true. Hear the prayers of your servant and of your people, Israel. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of the Father, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Good morning. Coming into the presence of the Lord, let's call to mind our sins. You came to call sinners, Lord have mercy. You came to heal the sick, Christ of mercy. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, pleading for us, Lord have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of goodwill. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you, we give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, Heavenly King, O God, Almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us. For you will honour the Holy One, you will honour the Lord, you will honour the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit and the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. Look upon us, O God, creator and ruler of all things, and that we may feel the working of your mercy, grant that we may serve you with all our heart. To our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Reading from the book of the Ecclesiasticus. Resentment and anger, these are foul things, and both are found with the sinner. He who exacts vengeance will experience the vengeance of the Lord, who keeps strict account of sin. Forgive your neighbour the hurt he does you, and when you pray, your sins will be forgiven. If a man nurses anger against another, can he then demand compassion from the Lord? Showing no pity for a man like himself, can he then plead for his own sins? Mere creature of flesh, he cherishes resentment. Who will forgive him his sins? Remember the last things and stop hating. Remember dissolution and death and live by the commandments. Remember the commandments and do not bear your neighbor ill will. Remember the covenant of the Most High and overlook the offense. The word of the Lord. The response to the psalm, the Lord is compassion and love, slow to anger and rich in mercy. The Lord is compassion and love, slow to anger and rich in mercy. My soul, give thanks to the Lord. All my being, bless his holy name. My soul, give thanks to the Lord and never forget all his blessings. The Lord is compassionate and love, slow to anger and rich in mercy. It is he who forgives all your guilt, who heals every one of your ills, who redeems your life from the grave, who crowns you with love and compassion. The Lord is compassion and love, slow to anger and rich in mercy. His wrath will come to an end. <clears throat> he will not be angry forever. He does not treat us according to our sins, nor repay us according to our faults. The Lord is compassion and love, 
slow to anger and rich in mercy. For as the heavens are high above the earth, so strong is his love for those who fear him. As far as the east is from the west, so far does he remove our sins. The Lord is compassionate love, slow to anger and rich in mercy. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Romans. The life and death of each of us has its influence on others. If we live, we live for the Lord. And if we die, we die for the Lord. So that alive or dead, we belong to the Lord. This explains why Christ both died and came to life. It was so that he might be Lord both of the dead and of the living. The word of the Lord. Please stand to acclaim the gospel. Alleluia, alleluia. Speak, Lord, your servant is listening. You have the message of eternal life. Alleluia. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Peter went up to Jesus and said, Lord, how often must I forgive my brother if he wrongs me? As often as seven times? Jesus answered, Not seven, I tell you, but seventy-seven times. And so the kingdom of heaven may be compared to a king who decided to settle his accounts with his servants. When the reckoning began, they brought him a man who owed ten thousand talents, but he had no means of paying. So his master gave orders that he should be sold, together with his wife and children, and all his possessions, to meet the debt. At this, servant threw himself down at his master's feet. Give me time, he said, and I will pay the whole sum. And the servant's master felt so sorry for him that he let him go and cancelled the debt. Now as this servant went out, he happened to meet a fellow servant who owed him 100 denarii. And he seized him by the throat and began to throttle him. Pay what you owe me, he said. This fellow servant fell at his feet and implored him, saying, Give me time and I will pay you. But the other would not agree. On the contrary, he had him thrown into prison till he should pay the debt. His fellow servants were deeply distressed when they saw what had happened, and they went to their master and reported the whole affair to him. Then the master sent for him. You wicked servant, he said, I cancelled all the debt of yours when you appealed to me. Were you not bound then to have pity on your fellow servant, just as I had pity on you? And in his anger, the master handed him over to the torturers till he should pay his debt. And that is how my heavenly Father will deal with you, unless you each forgive your brother from your heart. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Forgiveness is one of the uh, very central messages that Jesus gives to us. Um, and while we're used to hearing it, we really do have to understand that it's very central to what Jesus uh, says. It's kind of, there's a logic to it, if we can understand it. Um, and yet, we tend to just uh, lose it in, in because forgiveness is not, it's not an easy thing to do. In the story here, uh, it's about owing money. But I think Jesus means a much more general thing about the ways in which we forgive ourselves and forgive others for the injustices that we do to others or the hurts that we receive at the hands of others. So justice is giving everybody his due. That's due, D-U-E, can't say it, not due, due. So you have to give every, every, everybody what's due to them. That's what you owe to people. And to 
basic overall summary of that is what you owe to people is to respect their human dignity. And when you don't do that, they feel hurt. Something unjust has been done to them or something is lacking. A problem about being hurt that way is you can pass the hurt on to the next person and then you hurt them and there's a whole chain of hurt and oppression. So you have to break that chain and the only way to do it is by debt, uh, is by, by forgiveness. Nelson Mandela is a person who understood that when he was in jail with his fellow uh, um, rebels in, the, in South Africa, they were people who were very hurt by the oppression that they experienced in South Africa. But he pointed out very strongly to them all the time that unless they let go of that hurt, what would happen is they themselves would remain in the grip of their oppressors, in the grip of their abusers. Because hurt, if you hold on to it, hurts you too. It builds you up a wall of uh, bitterness, a wall of resentment, and in a way you form the prisons, the, wall of your, the walls of your own prison in your own heart. And the only way out of that is through forgiveness. One way out of it for a lot of people is not forgiveness, but to pass on the oppression so the oppressed becomes the oppressor. So if you've suffered oppression, sometimes there's a danger that you'll pass it on and oppress somebody else. And thus the cycle of hurt, the cycle of injustice, the cycle of violence increases throughout the world. So that's why I say it's a very central message of Jesus that he's put his finger on something very central that in order to stop the generations of violence, to stop the generations of injustice, the generations of hurt, we have to forgive. And the act of forgiving, you stop that chain but what you do is you accept and absorb the hurt that has been done to you. And you don't pass it on to somebody else. So that's a very difficult thing to do. However, Jesus doesn't ask you to do something unless he empowers you to do it. So the only way, in fact, you can reach forgiveness is when Jesus gives you the power to forgive somebody else. But it is a process. It's not just one particular act. It's a whole lot of things. You have to, well, if you yourself are the one who has done hurt, you have to admit the hurt. Like you do when you go to a sacrament of reconciliation. You go to confession. We call it reconciliation because it's more than just confessing. It is actually reconciling, getting over the hurt and the harm done. So what you have to do is, number one, you have to name what it is you've done. Like the, the whatever step it is for the alcoholic, he has to be very concrete in naming the bad things he has done. So you have to actually name it and say it to somebody else. So that's one stage in it, but you haven't yet got there. You also have to make reparation, you have to try and undo the hurt in some way. Now that's a harder step to take. It's always a simple one we learn in confession stuff is that if you steal something, you're meant to give it back uh, as part of the thing. So there's got to be some sort of a, a penance, and the penance really is restoring uh, the right situation. Therefore, we get there from that, we get the notion of, you might have heard of it, restorative justice, uh, a place where that's become uh, part of the discussion is in the question of prisons and imprisonment, quite often when a criminal or somebody does something criminal against us, that's an injustice and that's a hurt, and society in return puts them in prison. You could say, I think reasonably, truthfully, that the reason we put people into prison is just simply to get our own back on them, to its vengeance. It's to lock them up and throw away the key, and most of the general population leave it at that. You could argue there's other things about taking 
them off the streets so they don't do harm to other people as well. There's other arguments rather. But overall, I think that it is true enough that we are exacting uh, vengeance or punishment on the person who has done something wrong. And that, as you can see, doesn't work out very well. It doesn't do anybody any good. So now there's a kind of a movement or a discussion going on about the idea of restorative justice, that somebody who does something harmful to another then has to face it and name it and try to restore the relationship with the person that suffered. And that's a difficult process and it involves not just the two people involved, it involves their families and communities, it involves somebody to guide the process. So it's a, it's a slower, longer sort of thing, which uh, the budget for prisons doesn't allow for, at least in these countries. There are countries who are trying things like that, so Sweden as well. But the idea of restorative justice is one where you try to write things. With Jesus, he doesn't just give you the ability to confess to something. Um, he doesn't just give you the ability to restore uh, what you owe to people, but he also heals you in the process so that the act of doing all that is healing for you and healing for the other person. There's another aspect of this is when you actually have done some, something harmful to somebody else, say by accident you killed somebody in a car or something like that, you would feel so guilty, you would be paralyzed by it. Um, in that case, it's often when you are at the lowest point of feeling guilty or being ashamed or of hating yourself for it, that's often where grace comes and changes it around and heals you. So there's a, an amazing grace that people experience in that question of healing. Another problem about all this healing is that where you have been the oppressed pe people, say for instance at the moment in the, in the news, and it works kind of well in, the, in, in Great Britain and in America, is the question of uh, Black Lives Matter. That's a people who have been oppressed for generations and even today are being oppressed and discriminated against. So obviously, those who oppress them have to stop doing that. But what's the problem for the black person himself? They're challenged in the long run to forgive their slave masters, which is a huge challenge. I would imagine at this stage of it, it's simply making people aware of how the oppression works. And I think that's a legitimate phase, but it's not the only stage. Whether ever they can get around to the stage of forgiving their slave masters is another thing. Victims of war, same thing. If you have been hurt in some sort of war, uh, you will be challenged to forgive the militarists or women who have been hurt through history and even today. They might need to forgive the men who made it a man's world. As Irish people, we have suffered, I suppose, in history through colonization and oppressions. So we also need to forgive. So I have here a poem by Imelda May. You might have heard a bit long for this hour of the morning. Um, Imelda May, she's a singer from Dublin. She comes from the centre of the city of Dublin. She comes from the same part of Dublin as my mother came from, so I kind of like her cultural style. Anyway, she has this poem she just wrote very recently. Um, you don't get to be racist and Irish. And in it, she brings up all the oppressions of the Irish. Uh, she could be saying that you're not Irish. Uh, if you're racist. In other words, because we've experienced something like racism, that we should then identify with those who are hurt. She may be saying that, uh, or she might be saying that because we're Irish, that's the way we are, we're, we identify with the oppressed people. Which isn't quite true, because Irish people have been racist in their time. The Irish in Boston didn't acquit themselves very well. The Irish in southern states, people who came from Scotland, Northern Ireland, were in fact 
built up the slave holdings in the southern United States. And often in the empire, we, we colluded in other countries that were as colonial as our colonial masters. But I read the poem anyway. The great thing about a poem is we don't have to clarify the thoughts too much. It kind of gives you something to think about. So I'll end with the poem. Mel May says, you don't get to be racist in Irish. You don't get to be proud of your heritage by kneeling on the neck of another. You're not entitled to sing songs of heroes and martyrs, mothers and fathers who cried as they starved in a famine, or of brave-hearted, soft-spoken poets and artists lined up in a yard, blindfolded and bound, waiting for Godot and Point Blank to sound. We emigrated, we immigrated, we took refuge, so cannot refuse when it's our time to return the favour. Land stolen, spirits broken, bodies crushed and swollen. Unholy tokens of Christ nailed to a tree that you hang around your neck like a noose of the free. Our colour pasty, our accents thick, hands like shovels from mortar and bricklaying, foundation of cities you now stand on. Our suffering seeps from every stone, your opportunities arise from outstanding on the shoulders of our forefathers and foremothers who bore your mother's mother. Our music is for the righteous, our joys have been earned, we well deserved and served to remind us to remember more blacks, more dogs, more Irish, still labelled leprechauns, mix, paddies and louts. We're shouting to tell you our land, our laws are progressively out there. We're in a chrysalis state of emerging into a new and more beautiful era. Forty shades better, unanimous in our rainbow vote, we found our stereotypical pot of gold, and my God, it's good. So join us, because you don't get to be racist and Irish. So let us pray. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, <clears throat> maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things are made. For us and for our salvation he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day, in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken to the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church, I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Let us pray. God is a merciful and compassionate judge who forgives all our sins and failings and who in return asks us to forgive one another. In a spirit of humility, we now bring our request before his presence. We pray for our Holy Father, Pope Francis, that the Holy Spirit will continue to inspire him to govern the church with compassion and love. Lord, hear us. Lord, grace and hear us. For ourselves and the community in which we live, that we will always be open to forgiving those who hurt or exploit us, and that we will show mercy to one another in the same way that God is merciful to us. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. For those who may feel neglected in our society, the poor, the sick, the lonely, and those living with depression, we ask that God will comfort them through the care they receive from those who reach out to them. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. Life is God's precious gift to each of us. We pray that we will always have a deep respect for life, especially the life of the unborn. 
Lord, hear us. Lord, gracious, hear us. We pray for those engaged in trying to bring peace to all areas of conflict in our troubled world. Lord, hear us. Lord, gracious, hear us. And we pray today, especially for somebody who's died yesterday, Brian Hughes of Foy Lane. His funeral arrangements are to be yet to be published. And also, who died yesterday, May Farker of Lurgan. She was born Mackie, formerly from Portadown. Again, the funeral arrangements will come later. For those whose anniversaries occur today, it's the month's mind of Kay Litter, and then it's the anniversary of Craig Motes, Tommy McAlinden, Mary Breen, Joachim da Costa, Maria da Costa, Olga Maria da Costa Pinto, Maria Gama, Mateo Scama, Manuel Gutierrez Correa, Paulino Gama, and Patrick Skelton. And for those whose anniversary occurred uh, yesterday, Patrick Creaney is this month's mind, Paddy McShane, Liz Raythorn, and Anna Fowler. And those who were recently deceased, Antonio Virandas, Brian Hamill, Alice McShane from Derry McKesh, Fergus Fleming, Greg Gavin, Patricia McCann, Maura Cush, and Brendan McCourt in New Jersey. May their souls and the souls of all the faithful departed, to the mercy of God, rest in peace. St. Paul reminds us that none of us live for ourselves, but that we live for God. We bring all our concerns now before the God who loves us as we try to live our lives according to his will. We make our prayer through Christ our Lord. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we see the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands, it will become for us the bread of life. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you, fruit of the vine, and work of human hands, it will become our spiritual drink. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours will be acceptable to God the Almighty Father. Look with favour on our supplications, O Lord, and in your kindness accept these, your servants' offerings, that what each has offered to the honour of your name may serve the salvation of all, through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For we know it belongs to your boundless glory that you came to the aid of mortal beings with your divinity. May our voices, we pray, join with theirs in one chorus of exultant praise as we proclaim, Holy, Holy, Holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. 
Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dew fall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he betrayed and entered, he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion. He took bread and, giving thanks, broke it, gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, the church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, with Eamon, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with the Blessed Apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honour is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Saviour's command and form of the divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, from evil, we pray. Graciously grant peace in our days, that with the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you, Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant our peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Let's say a silent prayer in our hearts for the people around us. The Lamb, Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. We are happy to be called to his supper. Lord, I am not worthy that you shall enter into my roof, so I say the word. May the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ keep us safe to eternal life.
How precious is your mercy. May the working of this heavenly gift, O God, we pray, take possession of our minds and bodies so that its effects and not our own desires may always prevail in us through Christ our Lord. I have to read some notices for you, so when you're standing there. Um, one important thing is to note that there will be a reduced mass schedule and confessions on this coming week. And there's something in the left-hand column of the page to tell you about those. The offertory collection last Sunday was £1,897 and some 57 pence. So the priest's parish are very grateful. Um, and the parish draw. The promoter return evenings for the September draw will take place before and after the 7 p.m. Mass on Thursday the 17th and 24th of September. The draw will take place after the 7 p.m. Vigil Mass on Saturday 26th of September. Please note that this will continue to be done in private and be broadcast live to the parish Facebook page. The Lord is with you. And may Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit. The Mass has ended to go in peace, to love and serve the Lord. And have a lovely weekend.